making a Stuart model steam plant part 26, fitting the eccentric straps to the eccentric sheaves, finding a minor problem with some of the parts and cleaning up the laser cut expansion links so that they look acceptable and run smoothly. The story so far is the eccentric sheaves are now fitted to the engine and work perfectly. I have come across another minor problem. This is one of the eccentric straps, a very beautiful casting, but unfortunately the small bolt that fits in the bottom of it to hold it in position in the eccentric sheave is too short. You can clearly see this by this image. Alright, the bolt isn't fully screwed in, but it's still too short. Not a major problem if you have a one inch belt sander. All I did was to grind off some of the metal of the eccentric strap, then the bolt went all the way through, and the point of the bolt engaged with the slot in the eccentric sheave, and everything worked fine. When I assemble mechanical parts, I generally assemble them in a flood of oil, because if I forget to lubricate them, when the engine first runs, the parts could be damaged. After I fitted the main pinch bolt and the small pointy bolt at the bottom, I checked the rotation and I took it one stage further than that by slowly running the engine just to sort of bed in the eccentrics. Initially I fitted the eccentrics back to front, I do things like that now and again. I'd just like to point out that the straight eccentric rod needs to be the one that's closest to the engine. In this clip, even though the area is oily, I'm struggling to remove the eccentric sheaves. That's because the grub screw has marked the crankshaft making it difficult to remove the eccentric strap smoothly. Here's a solution for that. I ran the engine using the electric drill to power it and then applied some wet or dry sandpaper to one end. This quickly removed the burr and made the eccentric sheave much easier to slide on and off. The expansion links are laser cut, so they're a little bit on the rough side. This is okay because it's an easy job to clean up the expansion link. The top part is very serrated. This is due to the laser cutting process, but it's a really quick fix. I will be doing some cleaning up of the parts as I assemble them to make them work, but once I've finished the job, I will totally disassemble the valve gear to further clean up any parts that require it. In this clip you can clearly see how rough the expansion link looks at the side of the machined parts, which are very well machined indeed. This small piece of tube is called the die block. And on larger expansion links, it's usually a shaped piece of metal that fits in the slot. But this is just a piece of brass tube. These, by the way, are all special bolts with a parallel shank. Do not use threaded bolts as bearings. They don't work very well. Here I'm doing a little bit of draw filing with a small needle file to clean up the inner part of the slot, which is also a bit rough. After I checked that the die block was sliding smoothly in the expansion link, I ran the engine slowly with the electric drill and moved the expansion link from side to side and everything was fine. Before the final fit, I will clean up the expansion link a little bit more. Most of these small bolts are fitted with lock nuts, so you don't need to use any thread locker compound. Remember not to pour the bottle of thread locker all over your bolt. Put some on the bench and apply it with a scriber point or something similar. In order to make these small pointed bolts engage with the slot, as I previously mentioned, I had to remove some of the material from the eccentric strap, but I removed slightly too much, so I'm fitting a washer so that the small bolt on the eccentric strap cannot go too far in and lock up the sheave. In this clip I'm fitting one of the lock nuts to the parallel shank bolts that hold the eccentric rod forks to the expansion link, or the other way around. In the fullness of time, I will be fitting a lock nut to the bolt as it goes through the main valve fork. But there's no point in doing that yet, I will need to set the valve timing anyway. Here I'm doing a little bit more draw filing on the other expansion link, just to smooth it out a bit. And in no time at all, it does feel quite smooth. When people ask me which steam engine should I build as a beginner, I always say Stuart Victoria, because it's physically larger than this. The parts for this engine are very small, and this reversing gear is quite fiddly to put together. This is not the final cleanup, but I cannot live with the roughness of the top of the expansion link. In this clip, I've removed the expansion link from the valve fork, and you can clearly see the die block. After I put the die block in a safe place, 
I took this entire assembly into the outer part of the workshop and just gave it a light rub on my one inch belt sander, followed by polishing it on the polishing spindle and as you can see it looks a lot better. I used some medium grit emery cloth to clean up the gap as well. So now when it all goes back together it should be very smooth indeed. When I looked through the plastic box full of fittings, there were two eccentric strap pinch bolts missing. So I assume that you need to take these from the original eccentric strap, which is what I'm doing here. In this clip I've turned the engine around and I'm doing exactly the same to the expansion link at the other side. In this clip I'm setting the starting point for timing the engine. More about that in another episode. I went on to clean up the expansion link as you can see here, so now both of them are nice and shiny and smooth. You must not lose or forget to fit the die block, it's very important. Here, with the help of the scriber, it makes it a very simple job. The scriber also centralises it once it's in the valve fork. You remove the scriber, fit the bolt, job done. It's essential that the expansion link slides very smoothly in the valve fork at all times. Normally I would make expansion links from steel, but these expansion links are not steel, so they're nowhere near as strong. And if you don't get them to be mechanically correct, you will break them when you try and run the engine. And I do speak from experience, I've broken a few in my time. So now I'm extra careful to make sure that they're a very free fit. Not slack, not sloppy, just smooth. I'll give the girlfriend joke a miss on this reference. The box of bits is diminishing, but there's still quite a few parts to still assemble. But not in this episode. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.